cat fell out and she said her knee fell out. <laughs> Hi, Hi, everybody. Is out. Hi. I'm Linda Dano. And I'm Dee Kelly. Welcome to Attitude. <laughs> the limping wounded over here. We have great stuff today, as usual. Yep. My, one of my favorites and yours, Sonia Hamlin, is back. And today she's going to talk about how to communicate. Like conversation. You know when you go into a party or into a situation where you don't know another living soul and you have to to talk like at a dinner party yeah. when you're seated between yeah. two people and you know how uncomfortable you don't that know. can be right and how to start up a conversation right. yeah um good yeah we can use that because we've so reached parties. that yeah <laughs> don't we yeah. Uh, I, 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 like i've this. reached that point of uh, i just hate small talk i just hate how, how how's the weather nice you know. so oh, there is a real art that? to starting up yes. a conversation with yeah. strangers she's, she's going to show us how to do that great yeah. we have the rob report the magazine, The Rob Report, you may be familiar with it, is a marvelous magazine. But once a year, they put out a supplement to the magazine yeah. uh, with ultimate gifts. And you ultimate. just cannot believe a car wax, a little jar of car wax that's $3,500. Uh, a wedding gown. It doesn't come with a car. No, it's no, no. just the wax. Right. You don't right. need a car. I think a towel. It comes with a towel. No, it doesn't. We asked. Oh. We were hoping that the towel they showed in the little ad was with it, like cashmere or something. <laughs> but it's not. Just the wax. Oh, and let me show you this. Now, do you all know what this is? Do you have any idea? Can you guess? Cotton candy. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, it does look like cotton candy, doesn't Somebody it? said cheese. Cheese. You know, that cow yeah. in a bag. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nope. Cow in cow in a bag. Laughing cow. Oh, oh. I'm a little slow today. Um, this is a dress. Can you imagine? This is actually a dress. You know, you could. Uh, this is good for New York. Yes, it because is. Because in New York, where there's no space and certainly no closets, you could just have a little basket of these sitting around, and you could uh, have your whole wardrobe in your That's living right. room. Oh, where you know? are your closets, oh, Linda? We don't have any. They're right here in the basket. Storage problem. I mean, that suggests we're going to show you later how great this works. Great for traveling. Yeah, great for traveling. And they okay. look beautiful. We just, uh, speaking of beautiful. Guest. Yeah, he is <laughs> rather beautiful. Uh, he dreamed of the day he'd become a lawyer. In college, he worked, he planned, he studied for it. But one day, he was asked to appear in a school play, and that was it. He was hooked, and acting became his life. Well, he's now a very, very busy man. He's featured in a gripping new play called The Talented Tenth, which is opening here in New York. And he's the new love interest in the life of Lifetime's own Molly Dodd, from the days and nights of Molly Dodd. Let's take a look. Um, what? Look, um, I know this is going to feel a little strange to both of us, but but I'm going to be as direct as possible, okay? If you tell me you're gay, I'm going to be very disappointed. Rest easy. Good. Uh, so what's the problem? Well, for starters, the, the black and white issue. Don't tell me. You're black. Well, as long as you understand that. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Is that adorable? Yeah. Well, yeah. what do we say? Please, Please welcome, welcome Richard, Richard Dawson. Dawson. We hear you love being on Molly Dodd. Oh, I love it. I Why? absolutely love it because Jay Tarsus and Blair, Blair Brown and everybody on there is just terrific. This is the uh, third year they've been doing the show. We did a show together about four years ago called, um, um, it was a teacher show, I forgot oh. the name of it, but uh, that's where the relationship between Blair and I began. Really? And he took that relationship out of that show and put it in, uh, put it in the Days of Nights yeah. of Molly, but in Molly Dodd, so. It's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful now, show. Now, this, this is taking certain risks. This just, just isn't done, I'm not sure why, but it's not done on television. Have you gotten mail about it? I mean, the people are, are accepting it or not, or how are they feeling about it? Well, uh, I think the, the, the fact that it's coming on again is, is a, you know, an example of the fact that people are accepting it. I think they got a few letters from, yeah. you know, a few people down south or wherever they're from that have a few problems with it. But for the most part, people are very are accepting of the fact that these are these these are just two people who happen to care about each other, and and uh, you know the color is secondary. That's great. Yeah, it Tom. is great. Yeah. 
Speaking of color issue, tell us about your play that you're doing in New York now. I'm doing a play called The Talented Tenth by Richard Wesley, which is a wonderful play examining several issues. Uh, one of the main themes is, is deferred dreams. A man who had an idea, he was a, he was a revolutionary in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, he married into a, uh, a, a situation where he became very middle class, a successful radio executive, and he discovered that his values and his whole moral system had changed. He no longer cared about what was going on around him, or at least he cared about it, but didn't do anything about it. And, his, and he had to re-examine and reassess his values in life, and he set about trying to change that. What does the title mean, though? Can you tell us about that? The Talented Tenth it refers to uh, Dr. Du Bois, uh, in the turn of the century, talked about the Talented Tenth, which was the 10% of the race of people who build the ladder that the rest of their race can, can build upon and can climb upon. Oh, I see. Uh, they're yeah. the most talented group of, of the race that will be the teachers, the doctors, the lawyers, the ones who will pave the way mm. for it, that pass on the legacy. So there, is their job or should be their, their obligation to give back yes. to where they came from? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, that's right. what my character, Bernard, who, uh, when he went to Howard University, that was his consciousness. Yeah. He, was, uh, he was a leader at that yeah. time, and he was about, you know, helping the race and, and, and paving a way to, to make things better for people. And, um, and his lifestyle changed. He, he started thinking more about... He got about, comfy, didn't he? He got comfortable. He That's got greedy. Exactly it. Yeah. Um, greedy, uh, not so much mm -hmm. greedy, but just in the sense of, of he lost his, his point of view. Yeah. And, uh, and so and his, his whole passion. sense of conscience and his passion his was passion. gone. Yeah. He, they became more concerned with BMWs and La Bon Vie. Yeah. You Joseph know. Campbell, the great yeah. theologian, calls that being off the beam. Off yeah. the beam, yes, right. exactly. And does your character go back and, and, and reevaluate and then go back and, and give back to your community? Yes, he, um, he, he discovers through the course of, of his life that he is completely unsatisfied and unhappy. Yeah. He was in love with a woman named Habiba, and this is the metaphor in the play, uh, when he was in college. And Habiba represents his conscience, his direction. Um, uh, he married a fair-skinned woman named Pam, who was of the the black elite at the time. Uh -huh. uh, her father was a doctor and she was upper middle class. And, um, and he married Pam and left Habiba. Habiba went on to Angola and fought for the cause of people and she died in that. That being his conscience, she, he buried his conscience with her and Habiba calls him throughout the play. Uh, you mm -hmm. get a sense of mm -hmm. her presence mm -hmm. in his life mm -hmm. and an overpowering presence and his wife and his friends recognize because he always talks about yeah. Habiba the fact that that's really she what she had done that she, and he didn't yes exactly and, and that is the what part about of him you? What about Richard Lawson? What about, Lawson? What about Lawson? your essence? What, what about your passion? Do you have that? Do you want to give back? I have a, um, a strong passion for the things that I enjoy in life. I, I give back through, um, I work with a drug program. Um, I've been one of the ones that uh, manage a, the drug program for the National Basketball Association for the last seven years, six years. So, um, and I work privately as a counselor and uh, as a consultant nice. to the adult substance abuse program. And, and that, that is one of my great passions in life. When I'm not acting, I am on the road either teaching or training or educating or treating or dealing with family crises and family dysfunction right. and stuff like that. So that's one of the places yeah. besides actually playing basketball myself. I mean, yeah, that's right. <laughs> one of my great passions. Is a good Are you hour. on the beam? I'm on a beam of, of sorts, yes. Um, um, you know, I have a sense of consciousness about what I believe in in life, and uh, I'm a person with flaws as well, so oh, therefore please. I'm are you constantly... Oh, please. Yeah, you know. are you we proud? all are. <laughs> yeah, of course. Are you proud of what you've accomplished, which is a great deal? I am very proud of what I've accomplished, yeah, you, you know. Be. I think, you know, I'm right at that point in my life where, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with 
the, the, the two sides of me. You know, there's, yeah. there's the lighter side and the darker side, literally, phys you know, literally and figuratively in the sense of there's that flawed side and I'm comfortable with that side in the, right. in the sense of trying to work on the defects that I need to work on, you know. I mean, whatever it is, the selfishness, the what, where, where that part of you, your personality that you yeah. recognize that you want to strengthen. I'm working on that, but there's other sides of myself that I really love. So. We like what you've done. Yeah, we Richard. like you. Oh, good. <laughs> we think Thank it's you, great. Richard. Good, good luck with Molly Dodd and Thank the play. You. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks for Thank you. Us. Coming up next, a wardrobe you can stash in your handbag. Stay with us. took her inspiration from ancient Greece, from statues seemingly garbed in wonderfully fluid pleated gowns, and created a very 20th century, totally modern way of dressing. You buy her fashions as twisted, knotted, silken balls in a rainbow of colors. And a whole wardrobe will fit into a, a tiny handbag. Please welcome the creator of Karyatid, Holly Leaders. Hi, Holly. Hi, Hi Holly. Welcome. welcome. Thank you. It's fun to be here. How did you... How did you come upon this, really? Well, it's something that's evolved uh, over a number of years, and it's uh, because I'm very interested in fabrics. And uh, these are, this is called the Karyatid Collection. And the Karyatids are the maidens who hold up the portal of the Erechtheum and the Acropolis of Athens. And um, they, they um, are in these ten beautiful colors. And this is gorgeous. Look at this blue. Did you see how that opened up, everyone? And Just this was in a knot. <laughs> now, you're wearing a dress on your neck. Right. Well, it's, it's actually a long gown. So you can do anything with these. You can wear a gown as a scarf. Mm -hmm. It's great. Now, do you hand-dye these colors? Because they're very... Well, they're first sewn, new. and then they're dyed oh, they um, as a whole, rather than using colored fabric, because it gets a variation. Yeah. A mottled look. Now, we should mention that your background, your degrees were in art history and a, a, a predominance in ancient Greece culture well, and things like right. that. So is that where, obviously, you became inspired by this? Has it taken you this long since college to get back to the Greek culture in your fashion? Well, not really, because uh, all of these silhouettes are very simple, very mm -hmm. minimal kinds of silhouettes. And uh, so it's mostly the color and texture here that's uh, new. Okay. I, I've always been involved in designing the, the fabrics that I use, the embroideries, mm. but um, this is really more in that Greek feeling. And, and now, uh, great, for my right. great, great for traveling. Great for traveling. We'll and talk now, more about We that. have models that you brought, and, and Holly is going to show us how to take these little knotted things that you see here and make them into this and Wonderful. what you can do to them. All right, Holly, do your stuff. All right, these were designed <coughs> as intimate apparel initially. But you see, uh, you can wear it as a dress out. And what this is is the tunic and then the skirt. And, and this is a scarf. And you can wrap it around like this, tie it, and then you can take the skirt off. And you can wear it as a short dress. Wow. You could wear it to the beach, or you could wear it. Uh, <laughs> could wear it out dancing. Well, you could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, now what are you doing here? This is another dress. Yeah, this is actually a gown. Oh, I see. A nightgown. Oh, look at this. A nightgown. A nightgown. But you can so wear, you it wear to the these opera. from bed to ballroom. That's as we right. Say. How That's handy right. That is <laughs> really throw a little lipstick on, and you're set for the day or night. If you're tired, you just <laughs> stay in bed all day and go straight out dancing later. <laughs> we like that. Now, Holly, what kind of prices are we talking here? Is Everything here is below $170. Okay. Now, let's talk about travel again, because we really didn't go into that very much. How oh, much wow. easier would this be for anything could not be easier for travel? Well, I mean, you don't have to worry about it being wrinkled. It's really fabulous, no. because it comes in this bag, this gold mesh bag. And so you just keep it twisted up inside. <gasps> And you can, if you go away for the weekend, you can take 10 of these and use them in all different ways. This is and so they're lovely. great to layer with other things, too, as well as... Uh, now, what are you going to do on our own. other model? 
Now, Holly, while you're doing her, you can also just wash these by hand and mm -hmm. just twist them back up and let twist them dry? Twist them very, very, very tight. Right. Like so that's that, the old broom thing. Exactly. Remember? Yeah. That old broom it's an ancient you, idea. It's yeah. not... Uh, Look at that. And you just, and you make it very, very tight and you secure it with an elastic band. The colors are magnificent. The, the colors really are. They really are. And you beautiful. let it dry naturally or you can uh, put it in the stocking, put it in the dryer. Does it take a long time to dry? Well, if it dries naturally, it can take a couple of days. Hmm. Really? Well, you'd have to have several, you know. Yeah. Just alternate. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're not okay. that expensive, now, so Holly, you could. What are you doing to, to this? Now, this is a short Holly dress thing. now. And if we add this, which is a long gown. This is the long gown again. Now, you say you, you, you really can wear these to bed because they feel good against the skin? Oh, they're fabulous. They're is silk. Comfortable? They're very they're, soft. Yeah. And, and they expand. So anybody of any size can mm -hmm. wear these? And it's they're all... actually 90 inches around. So is this also inches. all season, Holly? There it's... isn't a season that, can you wear this in all four seasons? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, one thing you is can, for I mean, sure, this will not go out of style at these at colors. All. Oh, How look what pretty. you're doing. Now, is this a dress again? Yeah, this is a gown that I'm using as a sash. And, you and I like to do it. this because you can sort of pull this color through. Isn't that And clever. it just makes another it's element. Beautiful. Holly leaders. Caryatids. Very What a great idea. Really. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. You oh, look great, girl. Come on here. Well, it's happened to all of us. You walk into a party, you don't know anybody in the room, or maybe you're at a business lunch where you have to impress people and you can't think of one word to say to anybody. Don't you wish at that moment that you could be one of those supremely confident people who could just breeze through one of these situations and make brilliant small talk? Well, I'm told you can. Conversation is an art, and here to teach us all about it is the woman who taught Harvard Law School how to listen, the one and only Sonia Hamlin. Hello, you. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. that's a big promise you just gave. I know it is. Not but all about. Let's just start with the beginning about. The beginning. Yeah. Let's... What's the biggest problem that we make in talking? You know, I think everybody forgets that our biggest interest in the world is ourselves. And when you sit down to have a conversation, the first thing you want to do is impress other people so you talk about yourself. Guess what? Yeah. They're not interested in you. They're interested in them. So the beginning would be to first, if you can in advance, know something about the folks you're going to be sitting with. And right. if they're absolute strangers, ask, don't tell. Ask what they do. Ask first. What their life about is like. About anything. Even like, how did you feel about the weather? Did you get wet today? But before you say, I'll tell you all about me, folks, you spend a moment letting them know that you're interested in them, too. And the second thing to do is listen, because they give you 10,000 clues about what to do next. Now. Is it different for men than it is for women? Are women better conversationalists than men or, or the other way around? No, I think women are better because we're not as worried about tuning into each other. We spent oh, a lot of years listening to kids and listening yeah, and to husbands. mama and yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so we have sort of um, we're not as threatened by the idea of waiting a minute and you'll get yours later. Yeah. Uh, I think men have enormous pressure, especially in our country, to let them know who you are. See the muscles, whether the muscles are money or the muscles are the name on the door or whatever it is you've accomplished. Yeah, their portfolio. Sure. So the first thing they have to do is just clear the decks, folks, and let me tell you about me. Mm -hmm. This makes it more difficult because you see parallel conversations. This one says that. The other one says that. They haven't yet really joined. So the conversations are going on, but it's no conversation. Yeah. Now, if you were at a party and you really didn't know anyone, <laughs> when we say small talk, you really do have to do small talk. You have to yeah. talk about what, where they live. and So we just have to accept that, right? And you see, I don't think it's small. You don't? No, and I'll tell you why. Oh, I hate it. Wouldn't it be ridiculous if you and I sat down as total strangers and I said, tell me, do you really believe in the philosophy that 
the two of us don't know anything about each other. Would you like to share something as grand as that? No, Has you're to right. start little in the same way that the first thing you do with somebody is shake hands. Yeah. Even that, see, is sort of, I get a little feel of you and I am doing something that's very old. You know what this is about? Uh -huh. This is about, I want to show you, most folks in the world were always right-handed. Right. I'll show you there's nothing in my hand. I give you greetings of a benign nature. I'm not letting you know that now anything that's bad is happening. interesting because uh, there is such a thing as body behavior sure. when you first meet someone. Sure. So a handshake is important, big, isn't it? Big. And please, everybody, if you have children, would you teach them how to give a firm handshake? You learn it not when you're little. Not some whist thing. Not this thing. Yeah. The other thing is eye contact. Ah. Now these are small. This right. is a little bit of stuff, isn't it? Yeah. And yet it is the beginning of small talk. And the next thing people do is sort of introduce themselves and then they begin to get a little closer slowly. Yeah. You don't just start out mm, yeah, like grabbing that. someone yeah. like I would. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what about, isn't it important to know a person's name, try to listen enough? Oh, everybody has so much trouble. To remember a name. See, I have a big theory about that. I give up. I know I'm terrible at it. I forget. So you know what I do? I start out by saying, I am so bad at this. Will you please say it again? Oh, and if yes. I have to introduce Honesty. you to her, the first thing I do is say, I, I did it again. I yeah. forgot again. Yeah. Help me, please. Yeah. Help me. Or I remember your first name, but not your last name. Or how do you spell your first name? And then they'll say, Jane, J-A-N-E. You feel and like a really moron. Terrific. Yes, you feel like but an idiot. But in yeah. many ways, letting somebody know you didn't do it right yeah. makes it better for them. Like, oh, I don't have to be perfect either. Yeah, that is nice. Okay, now we're going, we've set up a little situation here. We've got a group of ladies sitting at a table yes. that don't know each other. Right. And we're going to see if they can communicate and talk and get to know one another. Right. Come on. We'll uh, let, let me you also tell you as we walk over here, because you all don't know what in the world is happening, let's pretend that you're all at a luncheon, some sort of a fundraiser. You were given tickets and you've ended up at this table together, but you have no idea who you are. Okay? And what we want to see is how does it begin? Go ahead, ladies. <laughs> Just like you were at a luncheon. Well, my name I is Gilly. How do you do? My name is Cynthia. How do you do, yeah. Cynthia? I'm May. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Hi Gilly. I'm Bryna. Hi, are you? I love your nails. Thank you. Uh, yes, your nails are gorgeous. <laughs> Let's see your nails. Oh, oh, you're not in this. Oh, right. Sorry. 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 Well, hey. No, no. I would be the one from another table that would say, let me see your nails. I would. Yeah. Okay. Let's Shy, I'm not. Let's yes. keep going. Now, I want, I want to stop for a minute. Have you noticed so far who started it? Yes. Yes. Gilly not only reached out, but her body language was that she reached over. Her voice was very full, you know, very much there instead of, well, hello. And then she also turned around to this side to ask her because you were sort of out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that will show you. But you're not a for wonderful long, not for person. With such <laughs> nails, but I say you're out of it. Okay, uh, what happens, see, is that somebody does take the lead. Do and they most always? People, yes. Always there one. are always leaders and followers. Think about it. Yeah. Who's the leader in your group, you know, in your family? That's fine. But then, once somebody else breaks the ice, don't be afraid to follow up. So keep going. Keep going. Okay. Um, Go ahead, leader. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're putting pressure on No, I'm sorry. I'm not here. Anybody I'm not here. can talk. Oh, well, uh, we're at this luncheon, I'm sure, for the same purpose. We're all interested in, I, I'm quite sure, in the, in the proposition of the subject that we're all involved in. How did you become involved here? I, I used a cab. That's good. That's good. she's in trouble over here. Help her. <laughs> she's terrific, but she's going to intimidate them. She's funny, and they may not. Do. You're about to leave the table. <laughs> What you did was interesting. You assumed. You, you did something that was good and also maybe not often. Don't start telling, I assume we are. Why don't you only say about you? Well, I came here because of so-and-so, but I'm really interested to hear what the rest of you came for, no, I, and that makes them talk. Oh, or, no, I, the assumption was that we're here for the same purpose. Don't assume, yeah, because that That's kills the conversation. Mm -hmm. and everybody says yes, and we're done. Yeah, you I'm, 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 you I'm, wanna, you I'm brought here by force. Right. <laughs> okay, now. Everybody keep their thought. We're going to come back more with sparkling conversation with Sonia. Okay? Take a break. Well, we're back with Sonia, who is trying to help us take the fear out of making conversation. Okay, right. take it away, kid. Now, I want to ask how you feel so far. 
<laughs> Hungry. I'm oh, yeah. sorry. I'm not yeah. talking. Yeah. What else? Nervous. A little nervous. nervous. Okay, let's get in the nervous part, because that's what everybody's... What are you nervous about? Put some words to it. Talking to people I don't know. And what will happen? Nothing will happen, but it's just the fear of... The fear of... Saying something wrong, maybe. Ah, saying something wrong. What are you... The same thing. Something wrong. Cynthia? Getting something caught between my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you're not from Saturday Night Live? <laughs> what about you? I'm anxious to make sure that I do the right thing. I'm a anxious stranger. Anxious to make sure I do the right yeah. thing. This sure. is the secret. See, everybody has a vision in their minds of how it's supposed to be and what a great conversation is and what clever small talk is and you keep trying to measure yourself up so in your head you run over a sentence no that's dumb I'm, no i'm not going to say that no that's no good meanwhile you listen to other people assuming that everybody else is fine yeah. in control everyone's and brilliant, brilliant but you except you oh, you have now found out that and i would recommend it at a table sometime to ask everybody do you have this problem that when you first start talking, it makes you nervous. Do you know what would happen? Let me, let me say it. Suppose I'm sitting here and I say, listen, I'm feeling sort of um, nervous because I don't know anybody. Does anybody else have that problem? I do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm at the same table. I do. <laughs> I don't believe you. No, I, I do. Shocking as it may be, I have the same problem all of you have. We all have that, I think. Okay, now you see what this will do? Yeah. Can you understand how this would stimulate conversation? Yes, that's right. So you know what we did? We did two things. First off, you admitted your own vulnerability, which makes it possible for everybody else at the table to relate to you. Mm. And the second thing you did was encourage other people to share something of themselves, because you just did. So the second rule after ask, don't tell, is invest something of yourself. Don't sit back and wait for someone else, but say something like, this makes me very nervous, or I don't know a living soul here, I really feel sort of funny. Anything like that gets an enormous response, because either the other people know, oh, well, listen, we've been here for years, and then you're taken yeah. under their wing, yeah. or they say, I don't know anybody either. Now you're sticking together. Now, you know that dumb cocktail party thing where you yeah. sort of wander around? Oh. If you'd ever just say, Hi. Listen, I don't know a living soul in this whole place. Could you uh, talk to me? Talk to me, so nobody knows that I'm here alone. Do you know right. how wonderful that would be? Yeah. Now, okay. Sonia, what happens? Let's say, let's say Gilly and Cynthia hit it off. You know how some people just yeah, click right? and hit it off. Right. And and our other two ladies are just sort of left out to lunch. Excuse the pun. <laughs> and uh, and yes, good. what do you do? Okay. What do you, how do talk you talk to each other? Talk to each other. Go ahead. Let's visually do it. All right. Don't scare her. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Gilly. You say something. Oh, what do you do? What do you? I'm, where do you work? I'm, I'm a restaurateur. Oh. oh. Mm -hmm. I love the table setting. It's Isn't lovely. it lovely? It's beautiful. I think it All is. All right, now stop. Stuff. Right here. What would the two of you do about that? You want to get into the conversation. I know you don't, but but <laughs> we don't let you do. Okay. You want to get in? What would you say? Is it interesting that she's a restaurateur? All right. You can ask that. Do it. Is it interesting what you do? Yes, it is. <laughs> Go ahead. Keep going. How about the people you meet? Are they friendly? In general, yes. I, I think they are. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Go ahead. What else do you want to know? What type of food does your restaurant serve? There you go. That's what's important. <laughs> what do you cook? But you see, what you're doing is now, you have stopped their conversation because what you're doing mm -hmm. is very interesting to her. Mm -hmm. Because it's about true. her? It's about her. Right. Yeah, right. Now, what will you do about this? Now, you're left out. Oh, I'd like to get into this thing because at first of all, I don't know what type of cooking that you have in your place. Is it the type of place that I'd be interested in coming to? What type of clientele do you have? It's general, um, just about every, everyone Where can... is your restaurant? Well, basically, it's, it's in the theater district. Okay, now we're going to stop. What, how do you two oh, feel? Well, she's the star. She's doing fine. What about the rest of you? Nobody knows what Bronna does. No, That's now, right. shouldn't she, as the star so far, shouldn't she ask? See, I'll no? tell you, not everybody is so that nice. Makes it oh, unfortunately. Oh. Well, well, see, she's we know your number. <laughs> she's not taking care of the whole world like you do. Like you she fun. may be thinking, oh, this is grand. Ask me more questions. This is fine. <laughs> okay, so the rest of you will again perhaps have to be a little more aggressive. Now, what would you do to sort of get back in the conversation? Well, it's. That's, what do you do? Good girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Outstanding. See what she did? She brought yeah. someone up. It's like tennis. Go ahead. Now you one thing, I, take, I go to classes. I'm retired. Nice. I go to classes oh. and I go to organizations. 
Like lunch. lunch. <laughs> and how, like lunch. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to show you another thing. How many of you know how to crochet? You've seen it, a crochet yeah, hook? I know yes. how to crochet. Okay, you yeah. take the crochet hook and hook on to what she said. She just said, well, I go to classes, I'm retired, I belong to organizations. There's three marvelous opportunities. A, you're not retired, but you're worried about it. Or your mother is retired. Or your father, you want to hear more about it, how did she handle it? B, she said classes. Oh, let's go. What kind of classes? Now, I've always wanted to take a class. Isn't it hard? I'm afraid to go back to school. Whatever it is you need to say to hook on to the conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, see? Sonia, yeah. why don't we do that? I mean, do you need to be a curious type person? Yes, but first off, you do. Secondly, you also have to yeah, sort of know that it's all right. Everybody, is that what it is? Fear? Remember when you were a kid? Speak when you're spoken to. Mm. Is that Don't interrupt the from? conversation. And so we have all got sort of very rigid rules about what not to do, but no one has ever told us what to do. And no. I am saying, would it be intrusive? Say again what you said. What do you do? I'm very interested in taking courses. I take courses. Oh, wait, courses. before you go another step, I'm dying to take a course. Tell me, how did you get started? Was it scary? Well, for one thing, okay, I... Okay, stop. Is it bad? <laughs> <laughs> I interrupted her, but was it insulting? No, I loved what she was saying, so I went for more. Very anxious that didn't more. look bad, right? Then could you say, uh, uh, what class are you taking? Well, I've been dying to take uh, right. auto mechanics. Right. Now, you see, <laughs> she know does I mean? another great thing when she does that then she gets to find out what, what to discuss she likes. with her. Exactly. And this one chooses to say, oh, my word, oh, I don't make a how about that. Yeah. You see what happens? If you give gifts, and these are gifts for you to do that, then people have more to go on, and you make conversation. You needn't be the star. Right. You can be a catalyst. Now, one question. Yes. Uh, we all have men in our lives. When, when men are together, oftentimes they talk about things that really maybe women aren't interested in. Maybe it's sports, maybe it's their office, their business. Is there anything women can do or should we just sit back and you know I'm try and look for pretty and, and boring you know, no, yeah I mean how do you no. jump in okay I would do one of several things I would say I have to tell you that I hate football like anything can you please tell me what's <laughs> wonderful about it or tell me what to look for the next time I watch football now he's teaching me Yes. So I'm in on it. Yes. The second thing I can do is, did you play sports when you were a kid? I have two sons, and I'm really dying to sort of get them into the game spirit. And what's the best way to get started? Or I have always played the piano. I want my kid to learn the piano. You see, you get people to talk about something where the two of you can join. He's interested in sports. I'm interested in a kid who might like sports. Or I hate it, and I want to know why. You're good, Sonia. She I good? Thank you. She good, everybody? You are all good. Good. the billionaire in your life. Come back. Do we go over to the trunk? Yes. Okay. Okay. I have a question for you. Right. What would you buy if you had unlimited funds? I mean, you had all the money you could ever dream of, what would you buy? Well, I'd give a lot of it to charity, right. which we probably knew. Yes. I'd put a lot in the bank. Yes. Um, take care of the family. Yes. Buy a little stone house. Yes. Somewhere far away. Somewhere over the rainbow, yes. Right, right. Yes. And uh, invest. Yeah. But probably, you know, charity stuff yeah. and that yeah. kind of thing. Very boring, very kind of practical. No, it's not boring at all. We're, we're practical, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. I was saying to um, John, uh, our director, you know, I said, I must be a happy person because yeah. I can't really think of anything I would buy with unlimited funds. But you have I wouldn't unlimited trade. funds. No, I don't. No, I don't. Not what we're about to see, no, this believe is true. me. This is true. Uh, we're going to show you some stuff that's going to curl your Outstanding. toes. <laughs> I mean, hold on to your seats. Here we go. All right, okay. let's start over here. Voila, darling. This Do is it. a Gucci trunk. This is worth $75,000. Oh, all, right. all right. It is crocodile. Tell them where this is from. All right, the Rob Report. We said earlier, right. remember, there was a magazine called the Rob Report. There and, it is. And once a year, there it is, uh, they come out with this little supplement of gifts. Right, the for ultimate gifts. For billionaires. Billion, billion, right. billions. Okay, now okay, go back now to the trunk. This is a crocodile trunk from Gucci. It's $75,000. It has 18 karat gold fixtures. All right? So this is just a, a mere bag Do of shells. Do you just throw this 
On the airline? Oh, sure. When you have this much money, you can buy ten of them. So if they scratch this, you just throw it away. Isn't that painful? Is this, it really is rather gorgeous. I would live in this thing. Yeah. <laughs> this, this would become my home, my car. I'd buy the little dresses in the balls, and there I'd be. Absolutely beautiful. That's right. I'd be totally self-contained in this. All right. I'm going to show you this from Waterford Crystal. This is a globe. I better not touch. I'm a little afraid to touch this. This is the small one, This right? is the tiny one. This is only $2,560. Yeah. Now, the reason that this is so much money, I, I, I want you to know this so you just don't think that they're, they're just making this up. It's a limited edition crystal. It took six months to make, and it goes through 12 craftsmen work on this one little globe. Can you imagine your cleaning person? Quack! Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd be in a hospital, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, Every therapy. We <laughs> might also mention that the Gucci steamer trunk took 400 hours of labor to make. Oh, and these, this is true craftsmanship. Okay, now, this is your specialty. Yes, we're doing water. Okay. This is water. Water of the Month Club. You, for $350 a year, you get a six-pack of over 200 varieties of gourmet water. From all over the Each world? Each month, yes. And you can taste Here, this. pick one out okay. you like. What's this brown bottle? It looks like beer. <laughs> it's from all over the world. This is kind of a fun gift for okay. $350 a year from the Rob Report. It's water. <laughs> this is delicious. Hey. <laughs> Henny is. I think to buy this, Swiss. if you could find half of these, um, it would probably be about half. But then you don't have to mail it, which is But it's is not in the Rob Report, and you're not ultimately chic. Yes. Okay, now, the next thing we want to show you... Is where you're taking me. Yes, it was where I'm taking you. A right. trip to that. A castle in Wales. Now, for a mere $25,000... This place has 89 bedrooms, but you can only use four of them. Okay, so I'm going to make that clear. Otherwise, you'd bring 89 friends. It'd be $10 each. It's not that. Uh, you can bring a group of eight, all right? It's complete with a butler, a cook, a housekeeper, and their staffs. It's more than the rest of you, okay? Breakfast in bed, wines from all over the world. I could be tempted. With that. that would be a fun thing. <sighs> and all the uh, gourmet food, gourmet wine. Beautiful. Oh, be beautiful. All right. Okay. Now we have, if you're into knives, <laughs> these are Barrett Smith knives. <laughs> They're 1500 to twenty thousand dollars each, handcrafted of gold, malachite, and precious and semi-precious stones. Can you see these? And each of these are 100 to 300 hours to create. And Alan, who's okay? If we could Help look, you, can yeah. we see this one right here also? Because on the blade, it's handcrafted. Yeah. You see this? Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. beautiful. And here's the malachite. Great for women in New York on the yeah. subway. Yeah. Yeah. You need a little? Okay. <laughs> this is now. This, <clears throat> this is my personal favorite. This is <laughs> a customized car wax in this little jar. This is $3,200 per eight ounce container. Now, this is individually, turn this around, babe. Is that what you want me to do? I'll take that off. I'll Zymol. Show you. Mm -hmm. Looks like uh, lemon mousse. Okay, this is custom crafted for your individual car. Okay? In other words, people come to your house, they evaluate your car, they, they test the paint, the, the kind of paint it is, all of that stuff, and they make this whole thing, and then they make up this wax for your car. And if you believe that, <coughs> they then pay for your therapy for another 12 months. This is good for someone who owns a little Hyundai and wants right. to feel more important. Right. Okay? All right, next. All right. Yeah, let's... Okay, this is another let's personal we'll favorite. save this one because we're going to yeah. do this one. They won't believe this one. No. So we're going to do it. This is a frisbee. We all know a frisbee, right? What is two it about? Bucks. Two bucks. Two bucks. Plastic frisbee. However, if dog? you look rather closely, you will see that this frisbee center disc has 18 karat gold and a one karat perfect diamond inside. Mm. And this is $18,000, everyone. Mm. And we were discussing the fact that the only reason you would probably buy something like this if you had an extremely picky kind of dog that would yeah. only catch yeah. this sort Imagine of if he caught frisbee. this in his mouth and swallowed well, the then, diamond. You'd yeah. cut him open with one of the knives. <laughs> no, you would, just, you would just wait very patiently. Okay. Okay, next is a $2.5 million wedding gown. Scary, isn't it? Yeah. 
Um, the headpiece that this lady is wearing is $50,000, and the garter belt is $1 million. Someone actually owns this in Japan. Now, it is obviously the world. Yeah, I would be too. <laughs> Expensive Andre Van Peer wedding gown. Edie said earlier that it's great because if the marriage breaks up, then you just pick off diamond by diamond <laughs> and sell it off and live off of it right. for the rest Pay of your, your life. Pay your rent. Here, That's it. take it. You know? Great. Okay. Uh, next is yo -yo. this the yo yo. All right, can you see that? Obviously, as you can see, it has 119 gemstones, 44 diamonds, 25 rubies, 25 sapphires, and 25 emeralds. The cost of this for a, a stocking stuffer this year is a mere $10,000. Unbelievable. Oh, I heard a few takers. <laughs> I'll sign you up. Well, everyone is ordering from our audience. We know that. It certainly gives you food for thought, doesn't it? It's yeah. fabulous fun yeah. for the billionaire in your life. to see the coolest way to stay warm this winter. Don't lose the diamonds! To stay warm and be chic this fall and winter, yeah. the idea is to wrap it, fling it, toss it, tie it. The shawls are it. Day or night, let's yeah. look at them. Yeah. The one I'm wearing is Anne Klein. Anne Klein. Comes in fabulous colors, yeah. absolutely warm I and delicious this. to wear. Yeah. See, it's wide too, so you really can fling it and wrap it around. This it's is very Laurel stunning. Piana. It's a, a, a paisley. It's very warm. It feels like cashmere. I think it might be. That's gorgeous. Very pretty, right? Now, see, some of the shawls are, are different shapes. Some are long and oblong, like the Anne Klein, and this one is more of a square. But the, the idea is really the same. Now, this is a square, but you fold it this way, and it's more of a cloth feel, a soft kind of wool. This is Ode Bronson, and look at these gorgeous colors. Look at That's this. That's beautiful. This Doesn't is... it feel scrumptious? Can you see that? Do you see it kind of glitter? It's got little beadings That's on it. That's suede, yeah, there you huh? Can see it. This is Adrian Landau, and uh, this is suede. And here again, this is, this is only a, like a big diamond shape. Lynn, is yeah. a shawl the absolute must for wardrobe this year? This year, if you want to save some money and you take what you've already got, buy yourself two things. Buy yourself a shawl. It's double purpose because it, it'll keep you very warm and bundled Beautiful. up. You can wear it over your head. I'm looking at as it. As well it's as around so you. And buy yourself a vest. You'll look right in style for the whole season. Evening or yeah. day. Yeah. Okay? Have a wonderful week. <laughs> Are we done? Yeah, I think oh. we're done. Have a wonderful week. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> To receive the Lifetime Attitudes tip sheet with information on today's show, call 1-900-773-4040. Today's show and issue number is 7. The cost of the call and tip sheet is $2. To avoid ordering duplicate tip sheets, please check your issue number before placing the call. If you would like tickets, please send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Attitudes Tickets, 3412 36th Street, Astoria, New York, 11106. Or give us a call at area code 718-706-3575. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. 2 Central, actor Shanna Reed earns her stripes in the hot new sitcom Major Dad. Join the ranks and tune in for Attitudes. Coming up on the Lifetime Afternoon movie, Homicide gets a mother's touch when a woman interferes with her son's detective work. Esther Roll has a maternal instinct for murder in the offbeat comedy See China and Die. Next, happy holidays from all of us here at Lifetime.